Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning on God's Work, Our Hands Morning, and it's great to have you all with us. I'm looking, Elsie, do you want to come and share right away our, um, some of our directions for today? Good morning. It's so good to see so many here. Um, our first project is going to be adding wood chips to the walkway. Um, you can drive your vehicle up on the east side of the bus. And um, Kelly Craft, uh, who is the after school person, and Dan and Ann Stanoyan are kind of the lead people on this. So people can park on the east end of the bus garage and um, there's been some poison ivy in the woods, but Kelly sprayed for that, and she would like us to be able to do some stuff along um, the woods in addition to moving the wood chips. Um, and Dan and Ann, you raise your hands. So anybody that doesn't know them, um, plan on meeting with them afterwards. Number two is organizing school, um, Lutheran World Relief School and Health Kits, and we got a good turnout for that. And number three is road ditches, and we have a full number on that. Um, number four is um, collecting produce and delivering to Tamarack. Um, we have some produce to, to send down there, and Zinta and myself will take care of that. And number five is painting curbs and the lines in the parking lot. You probably saw that everything's fenced off to the west here. We're going to do the west parking lot doing, doing the yellow lines and also doing um, the handicap blue in that. So we could still take some more people on that if you're interested in doing that. Um, brushes, rollers, paint, um, everything is, is supplied for that. You just got to have an interest in doing some painting. Number six is pulling weeds and adding mulch to the landscaping. We're going to concentrate right outside the offices this year. Um, we got a total of five yards of, of the dark brown mulch. Jim will bring it on over with the tractor so it will be to pull weeds and to level the mulch out and then moving this way. And the next one is clean up for Tingles Road Ditches. And we have a good group there. And um, they'll be leaving and going up to Tingles right after this. And then the lunch setup crew were good and photography were good. And so um, just plan on meeting after church and we'll give you directions on where you're going and everything else. Thanks for coming. Thanks for your service. I'm sorry. I did say ditch cleaning for Spiritic is full. We don't need any extra people on there. Sorry, Bert. You must have dozed off during the announcement. <laughs> Thank you, Elsie. <laughs> next week, or next Sunday, is the start of Sunday school. It is the hoedown, and um, we look forward to that. I am. Um, I have a small group survey. If you did not see it in the newsletter, there are some in the entryway that I am inviting you to fill out. We actually signed on with a group. Um, it's the largest video library in the world. And they are, it's called Right Now Media. They have children's videos. They have things for adults at whatever age you are or whatever your need is. Um, and we, we will be having some small groups this fall. And um, so I'm curious what you are interested in, so please fill this out. The Fall Bazaar is on October 1st. <coughs> There's a, it's exciting to have it back. I've actually never been part of it, <coughs> and I look forward to doing that. And so um, there's... Um, you can look in the newsletter, which if you need a newsletter, there's actually some underneath the mailboxes. You can always find the newsletter there. Or if you want to receive it and don't, 
please contact our church office. So the Fall, fall Bazaar is October 1st. And then the Rite of Confirmation will be on October 16th this year. <coughs> So mark your calendars for that. With that, I invite you to rise as we confess our sin and are reminded that we are forgiven people. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing together our gathering song, Gather Us In. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
Let us pray. O oh God, overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care that we may reject whatever is contrary to you and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first, the first reading is from Exodus chapter 32, verses 7 through 14. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once, your people whom you brought out. Firstly, they have been quick to turn aside from the way of them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians, it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven and all this land that I have to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. Please read responsively Psalm 51 verses 1 through 10. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, and your great compassion blot out my offenses. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. The second reading is from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Here ends the reading. At this time, I invite the kids to come forward. You for coming up. Okay. 
that we can move this. Sorry. How is everybody today? Doing all right? So in a few minutes, we're going to um, read a story from the book of Luke about some things that are being lost. Have you ever lost anything? <laughs> like what? Your Fitbit. Yeah, I bet that was kind of stressful. You never found it. Yeah. You never find toys that you lose in your room. I get it. I get it. Jack, certainly you've lost something. What did you lose? Your chargers, that's another thing we oftentimes lose, don't we? Yeah. Anyone else want to share something that you forgot or you've lost? Yeah, Katrina. Some things that like go into your bed, they never come back. Yeah, maybe they're in the bottom of the washer or something. I don't know, in the sheets. Yes. Your blanket, did, did you ever find it? Yes. How long did you have to look? Okay. Well, this morning I've been looking and looking for my stuffed animal, my little kitten. Her name's Lydia. She's right there. That's kind of crazy. You know, sometimes she goes out late at night and I stay up and I call for her. Lydia, Lydia, come home, come home. And I, I don't give up. Ask Dale, I sleep on the couch waiting for the cat to come home. Today we're going to hear a story. Actually, there's two stories. They're parables. They're stories that Jesus tells. And they are about things that were lost. One was a sheep that was lost. And the shepherd looked and looked for that, shep that sheep. <clears throat> and the second was a coin that was lost. And the lady looked and looked and looked until she found that coin. So these two stories, they're a parable. You know what a parable is? I just told you. It's a story that Jesus tells to help us see things, sometimes see things in a new way. But they also help us to see who Jesus is. So who do you think, how do you think this helps us know who Jesus is? Jesus always is there for us, right? And Jesus, even those times when we're lost, where we can't, we're not seen, but Jesus is always there looking for us. And when we come back, there's a Jesus is happy, right? Jesus is a God of second chances and celebrates when the lost are found. Awesome. Let's pray together. Um, dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for school starting. Thank you for all the things that we have. And thank you for loving us no matter what. Amen. You can always have one of those little ones. That, yeah, you want a little one? Do it. You guys can have two. Yeah. Please rise for the gospel. We continue in Luke's gospel, chapter 15. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told this parable, Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness 
and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he says it on, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, what an amazing day. And we thank you that we are able to gather here together, whether we're here in this place or whether we're online. God, we thank you for the sun and for the fields that look so amazing. God, we thank you for the kids, whether they're young or old. God, we thank you for those who who serve, serve in quiet ways and who serve in big ways. God, we thank you that we are able to gather here and that you love us no matter what we do. Amen. You may be seated. Once again, Jesus is in trouble for hanging out with the wrong people. There is a grumble. All as all the tax collectors and sinners come near to listen to him, the Pharisees and scribes begin to grumble. This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. In response, Jesus tells these two parables. In the first, a shepherd leaves a flock of 99 to look for a single lamb that is lost. He searches until he finds it, and when he does, he carries that one lamb home on his shoulders and invites his family and friends to come and celebrate. In the second, a woman loses a coin. Immediately, she lights a lamp and sweeps the house the entire house, looking carefully for the coin until she finds it. Then, like the shepherd, she calls together her friends and neighbors and asks them to celebrate the recovery of the coin. One thing that strikes me about these parables is that for so many years, I misread them. For a long time, I thought that the lost lamb or the lost coin were the unchurched or the unbelieving. The people out there, the atheists and the nons, those beyond the fold. <clears throat> but as I read closer, the last lamb in the first parable belongs to the shepherd's flock. From the very beginning of the story, it is his lamb. Likewise, the coin in the second parable belongs to the woman before she loses it. The coin is one of her very own. In other words, these parables are not about lost outsiders finding salvation, and becoming Christians. These parables are about those already in the fold. These parables are about lostness. 
What does this mean? Well, it means that lostness isn't an experience exclusive to non or not yet Christians. Lostness happens to all God's people. It happens within our community. It's not that we cross over once and for all from a sinful lostness to a righteous foundness. We get lost over and over again, and God finds us over and over again. Lostness is a part of the life of faith. But what does it mean to be lost? I think it means many things. Think for a moment about the ways you've wandered without maybe even realizing it. The ways you've lost your way and found yourself in a strange land with no markers to guide you home. Sometimes we lose our sense of belonging. We lose our capacity to trust. We lose our felt experience of God's presence. We lose our will to persevere. Some of us get lost when illness descends on our lives. When someone, some of us get lost when death comes to a loved one. Or maybe when a marriage falls apart, or some get lost when our children break our hearts, or when we're in the throes of anxiety, or unforgiveness, or hatred, or bitterness. Some of us get lost very close to home within the walls of the church. We get lost when prayer turns to dust in our mouths. When sitting in a pew on a Sunday morning no longer brings us joy, or the sermon seems to be pulling the oxygen out of our lungs, we get lost. We get so lost that the shepherd has to wander through the wilderness to find us. We get so wholly lost that the housewife has to light her lamp and sweep the entire house, every nook and cranny, to discover what's become of us. For the record, these versions of lostness aren't trivial. Notice that the searching in these parables is not for show. The shepherd isn't just pretending to look for his sheep, and the woman isn't just putting on an act with her lamp and broom. What is lost is truly lost. Which makes it all the more amazing when we think of God's love in this way. That God searches, God persists, God lingers. And like the prodigal son, God always welcomes us back. God wanders the hills and valleys looking for the lost sheep and turns the house upside down looking for the lost coin. And when at last God finds what God is looking for in you and in I, God cannot help but contain the joy inside. So God invites the whole neighborhood over to celebrate and throws a party. The good news of a God who never runs out of patience and grace to forgive our sins, no matter what our story. Or as a confirmation student once put in a paper when they were describing God, God is a God of second chances. God will search us out. God will never quit looking for us. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, cleanse me from my sin, create in me a clean heart, and put a right spirit in me. 
Thank you, because I so often miss this mark, but you love me anyway. Amen. Please rise as you're able. Let us sing together, Will You Let Me Be Your Servant? Following this service, I invite you to leave your offering in the entryway. But at this time, we are going to pray and give thanks to God for all the ways that God provides for us. Please pray with me. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you to John and Donna and to Valerie for this beautiful vocal me melody. Thinking of what we should uh, sing today. Um, it was last week we were down by the lake, and how many saw the northern lights? What a sight to see. And it brings us to think about creation that we have in front of us. And so we're trying to bring the God's blessings that he's given to us. And as we try to remember 9-11 as a patriot's dream, to all those men and women that gave their lives for our country. And we thank all of the EMTs, the doctors, the nurses, the firemen, the policemen that uh, risked their lives so many years ago. So we're, we're singing this as thankful to God. We're doing a little melody of three songs put together.
to shine in beautiful for patriot dreams that sees me on my ears. The alabaster city's gleam bond in my human tears. America, America, God mend thy every flaw. Confirm thy soul in self-control. Thy liberty in God bless America. Land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Your people receive mercy, and your grace overflows in our lives. Fill your church with faith and love, and give understanding hearts to those who work to strengthen our economical and interreligious commitments. God of grace, your creation groans as it suffers the impacts of pollution and the lack of care. As the seasons change, renew in us the will to protect plants, animals, and habitats. Bless us with the bountiful harvest that all may share. God of grace, your world is shattered and the nations rage. Remember us in your mercy. Today we remember the event of September 11th, 2001, and pray for peace. Teach wisdom to our elected leaders so that we may know the peace in our world, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. God of grace, your children wander homeless and hungry and cry for bread. Seek for those who are lost or lonely, anxious or depressed, and struggling with addiction or illness. Provide for those in need. God of grace, today we pray for Clarice Peterson, Ruby Henderson, Nita Schultz, and the family of Joanne Kugler. And we give thanks that Orville is back with us today. Your home, excuse me, your work is done in this congregation with our hands, feet, voices, minds, and hearts. Build up the ministries of this community that we may serve our neighbors and welcome the stranger in your name, God of grace. Your blessed saints have died and now rest in your presence. Give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives and receive us with joy when we come to share eternal life with you. God of grace, gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, 
We offer these in all our prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. to share peace with those around you. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I invite you to rise as I think the next slide is the, um, this is a tradition at Tingvold, and we welcome the people from Tingvold with us today. So please sing along to their, their, um, the blessing song that they sing at the end of the service. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. You made the whole earth for your glory. All creation praises you. We lift our voices to join the songs of heaven and earth in thanksgiving for the many blessings you have given us. Renew in us the commitment to use our gifts in the service of others and especially of those in need. Let us be your hands to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, Clothe the naked, comfort the weary and outcast, welcome the stranger, care for creation, and be loving to loving neighbors to all people. And please receive this blessing. Bless those who go out from here to serve in Underwood. Prosper the work of their hands. Bless those who receive them. And may those who are sent receive blessing in return. May the gifts they use and share be signs of your love to all people. Amen. 
Please join in singing, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. Just tell you where you're going to meet up with your group. Um, Dan and Ann and John are going to meet up at the east end of the um, bus parking lot. Um, that's group one. And group two organizing the projects for Lutheran World Relief, School and Health out in the Fellowship Hall, please. Um, Sarah Cleanup Crew is going to meet at the North Garage with Bert and Pete. And um, produce, Zinta and I will meet by the um, produce cart that's right out front there. And the painting of the curbs will be at the west main entrance. Um, you'll be painting the whole west side. And um, pulling weeds and adding mulch also at the west entrance. And um, Tingle, if I can take a picture of you before you go, and we want to make sure we're going to send your food out with you, and that's so you have that. And um, you can meet in the library, please, and then go on to Tingvold. Is that going to work? Or, do, or should I just catch you up at Tingvold? Up at Tingvold. Okay. And the lunch crew, out in the kitchen. Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.